Welcome to the Aries Solar Festival of the 2025 initiative. This is the first solar festival webinar in this annual cycle. We welcome you and grateful for your ongoing participation in this work of collective alignment. This year, the theme that will run through all our webinars is alignment, alignment with the light. Continuing the theme of light that's been running through the last few years in our work. And our first webinar this year, we have special guests, Alice, Boynadine Schneider and Rudolf Schneider from Switzerland. And they will share with us on the topic of right human relations through Yagna. So thank you very much, Rudolf and Alice. I will bring your microphone on. Yes. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Your sound is beautiful and the microphone is yours. So I will just make you a presenter that you could share your screen. And right. thank you for being today with us and we welcome your sharing. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you. I enjoy the meeting what you have, what we have together with the wonderful solar energy still here in Geneva. And uh, I hope you have a very fruitful group cooperation. Thank you to Alexander and to the 2025 initiative for this invitation to talk to you today about uh, right human relations through Yagna. I'm going to start and then uh, Rudolf will continue after some time. Right human relations. This is a term that for a long time caused me some difficulty because I always wondered why only human relations. Why not right relations to everything, to all people, to all kingdoms of nature? Why limit it to human? And then it is only recently that it occurred to me that human could have another meaning, not just the human race. It could mean also humane. And thus the term right human relations is actually talking about two different qualities. The quality of being right and the quality of being humane. So this this is these are the qualities that should characterize our relations to each other on the planet. These relations should be right, they should be just, they should be fair, but they should also be full of benevolence, of humaneness. So this is how now I understand this, uh, why it is said right human relations. And then I found in the teaching of Confucius something that was quite interesting. There is in uh, the teaching of Confucius uh, 
a term that's called run. My Chinese pronunciation is probably terrible, but <laughs> that's more or less how it is pronounced. It's a Chinese character that is a, a double character formed by two signs. On the left, you have the character for human being. And on the right, you have the character for the number two. These are relations between two people. And it's the name of a virtue in the Confucian teaching, which is the quality of being benevolent, of treating each other as we would like to be treated. It's in short, one word for the golden rule, which uh, Confucius expands on quite a lot, because for him he defined the, the golden rule as treating each other according to our position. So if you, are in, uh, you treat your superiors as you would like to be treated by your inferiors, you treat the ones on your right as you would like to be treated by the ones on your left, and vice versa. You treat the ones in front of you like you would like to be treated by the ones behind you. So he, he places, he defines very precisely what is um, the golden rule. But he also uses this sign, which is the sign for this virtue of being humane. Now, this is about right human relations. There is, um, why did we decide to talk about Yagna also during this webinar? Yagna is a, a word in Sanskrit that means offering, but is most usually translated as sacrifice because it is also the word used when they uh, make um, a ceremony, a ritual where something is sacrificed on the fire. And this is this fire of sacrifice is actually the motor behind the whole creation. The creation itself is yagna. The creator took form in the form of in the creation. It was a sacrifice which he did to give life to the whole of the creation. And all the creative intelligences, they turn the will of the sacrifice. And it's the will of the year also. The year is sacrificed, is a sacrifice of divinity to become, to enter into time and to make this cycle that we call the year. And this sacrifice starts in Aries, the ram, which was symbolically, well, at in the old Vedic times, it was really a ram that was sacrificed. But it's a symbol for the year god, the ram. The head of the ram, with the two horns represents the head center of humanity, of the human being, and of the planet. It's a symbol for Shambhala as well. When the initiate or when the disciple, when he goes from his human consciousness to a planetary consciousness, he said to receive the head of a ram and to become one with the head center of Shambhala. Since we are now in the months of Aries, we share with you a prayer that was given to us by Dr. Krishnamacharya for the months of Aries. He invokes the ear god 
or the the god of sacrifice, Jataveda, which is also another name for uh, Lord Agni, the god of fire, the fire of the mind, the solar fire. And uh, the invocation goes, O Jataveda, origin of wisdom, thy lighted path is the unborn ram. The lighted path is the year. Illumine him with heat. Let your flame, your splendor, cause combustion in him. So we are asking for the fire, for solar fire to illumine our ear. Let he, lead him to the plane of good works with the help of those vehicles of yours which are auspicious. Lead us to the plane of good work with the help of our vehicles. Thank you. I would like to add something what is in my last 40 years one of the main works what I try to do and this is the 10C group what which were given by my master DK the Tibetan master when he started writing the books with Alice Bailey and uh, this 10 seat groups for which I worked in the last 40 years and traveled around the globe to many different spiritual groups and informed them about this message and that we are invited to help to spread this idea as a base for the new coming civilization in all the parts of our world, in all the, especially in the beginning of the spiritual groups, but it should also to come to the surface for the common people all over the world. So since uh, I was in the last two years very strongly working on the seed groups in the Ukraine and in Russia, we have also groups in, uh, in, uh, in South America and here in Europe. I would only like to mention, to name these 10 C groups once again, and if you want to have more information, then you can anytime contact us, or you can go into the books of Master Twalkul, especially the Discipleship in the New Age, and find these groups. And I will only mention the names now here, because for me, it seems it is one of the most essential works we are invited to help the hierarchy that we can have a new global consciousness with all the people we can reach. The first, it is very interesting, is a telepathic communi communicators. So the spiritual hierarchy, the masters of wisdom, they all work on telepathic communication. So uh, they are independent and they can do this anytime and everywhere. And so therefore, the first and the most essential new activities in the, come in the Aquarian age approaching us now is the development of the telepathic communicators. Because the masters of wisdom want to have cooperators, want to have women and men, with, with which they can uh, come in contact anytime and everywhere. So as the first and most essential group is the te telepathic communicators. Then the second group are the trained observers. These are fellows, they understand the inner, the inner values of events what happens on our planet and individually is the same. Then 
<coughs> the next group are the so-called magnetic healers. So we get in the direction of a new system for helping the sick people with magnetic energy, with magnets. It is a quite different approach than we have today. Then we have the next group. These are the educators in the new age. We have another group is called the political organizers. These are people who see humanity as one essential center of active intelligence besides the other two centers, the Christ with his 63 masters of wisdom, which are the government of the planet. And then we have Shambhala. They will do good. They have another group, these are the workers in the field of religion. So this is a, a group which will change a lot of the today still existing religious approaches. And it is through a, a mysticism, through occultism, and through transcendental religion. Then the next group, I mentioned this also only very brief, that you have time afterwards perhaps to ask questions. The scientific service. So people working in the different fields of science and helping to understand better, still every day a little bit better, what planetary life really does mean for all of our humans here on this planet. Then we have the other group of this data psychologists. So this is a very deep science which is guided by our higher selves so that we can get as Alice already mentioned, right human relations. Then we have more exoteric group. These are the financiers and economists. This very essential now, as we see, we are, we are still in a very, very heavy economic and financial crisis on the planet. And then the, ten, the tenth group is a group who can help all the other groups to, to present to them a way out of these misunderstandings into a more constructive living and working together, and these are the creative workers. Since I am studying very often these uh, groups, it seems to me that in this process of approach to the Aquarian age, what will last with us for 2,600 years, there is a new quality which comes closer every day to humanity. We speak of right human relations, we speak about goodwill, and we speak about uh, uh, helping each other and so on, but a new, total new cosmic quality comes to us and this is the cosmic beauty. The cosmic beauty embraces all these good things what we are doing today, but goes still one step ahead and through meditation and study, also in group formation, I think we have to learn what cosmic beauty individually means to us and what cosmic beauty will be for us in the next millennium and how we have to change our lives, how we have to start a new kind of thinking, a new kind of working together. And this is a process which will guide us the cosmic beauty will guide us steps by step in every meditation what we are doing, 
even when we are only taking this word into our into our microcosm energy follows thought so if you think or speak about cosmic beauty we are inviting this energy of cosmic beauty into ourselves into our groups also our group now sitting together on the planet and working together so i invite you all study once again the 10 seed groups and see that the cosmic beauty is already unfolding to the 10 seed groups this is the first step what we all can together and where we can build a new humanity a new planet and a new future for all of us here on the planet in this troublesome time what we still have until today this is what i wanted to share with you about these 10 secrets and cosmic beauty and that it is for all of us a task to take it on as best as we can and reflect about, meditate about, and act in, as, and act in this new understanding of cosmic beauty. is a beginning. So, uh, that this, this understanding is still be, is just beginning. What cosmic beauty does mean for you, 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 and me, and for everybody who are listening this this evening or this afternoon. So this is my contribution for our group work and uh, I give now back uh, this to Alice. Or actually I now give uh, the floor for questions. Thank you, uh, Rudolf. Thank you, Alice. And uh, we are opening now the floor for extended sharing from the group, from community. So, uh, please use the function raise your hand. It's the button on your control panel and we would unmute you. Or you can write your thoughts or questions in the question section of the control panel and we will voice that for you. Sometimes it can take a um, few minutes for people to reflect and uh, I suggest we have just a short moment of silence to go within and reflect on what's just been shared. There is a question uh, from Joe. What type of meditation do you see as most beneficial, most useful in advancing this idea of cosmic beauty and folding? Back to you, Rudolf and Alice. Yes. And I think the full moon meditations are very essential. So I think to start with a good impact, we should work together 
in this full moon meditations because there is also the hierarchical background with us and we can use these energies for a deeper understanding and for a better relations between all of us and especially for the deeper understanding. Because this, for me also, this is a total new chapter, this cosmic beauty. And we have to help ourselves to unfold this in ourselves and then share it in the groups and share it all over the planet as, as we can, as we meet other people and, and we speak to, to friends. So it is a message, it's only two words, cosmic beauty. So this is coming to us with the Aquarian age. And we can ask us the question, how can I prepare, pre prepare myself? How can I make me fit spiritually that I can be a useful tool for the unfoldment of this cosmic beauty on planet Earth. It is the, these are the first steps what we are doing together here. And therefore, we have first to see our own qualities, our own ideas, and our own approaches, and then we will meet once again. And then we can uh, share our experiences, what we had individually, then in group formation, and then it will spread out over the whole planet. This is my vision and therefore I'm so grateful that you invited me today also to speak a few words and I was full of joy when I could speak about this cosmic beauty because it goes very deep in, in my own being and now I hope that I will have companions on the planet going in the in the same direction. So let's let's have the courage to make experiences with within ourselves and with in our group work. It is a new chapter what we open here. It's a total new chapter. So there are no no other examples. We we are our own example here. So it is Absolutely, we are babies here and we try to do the first steps in a direction what was not yet so in the focus before we started this group meditation, this group work today. It is a beginning for everybody of us. This is my answer, what I sent to this friend for his question. It is for everybody who listen to this sharing, also for, for me and I suppose also for Alice because I didn't speak to her before uh, we prepared uh, also for me a few minutes to speak that I will bring in this cosmic beauty. So uh, we are beginners, new beginners, but I can tell you one thing what I found very helpful. This is when you starting studying in Dina one, discipleship in the new age one, and you start with the part three in Dina one part three, where Master Twalkul speaks about this enfoldment of total new group consciousness and so on. If you start this work doing parallel with other reflections and then we will also get a cooperation through the guiding forces of the master and then we will create new group life and new group activities total new because this is a total new chapter for the whole planet I cannot tell you more because I am also in the first steps like you so we have to have the courage to make our experiments and experiences and share them and then see how we can do the best for humanity and for the planet. This is my answer for this question. We are at really at the first, at the first step 
of a long, a long way with the two and a half thousand years in the Aquarian age. Thank you, Rudolf. There is a raised hand, and so I will unmute Annette. Define thoughts. Uh, my my first thought Annette. when you said, my my first thought when you said cosmic uh, beauty was about uh, the fourth ray uh, coming in 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 twenty uh, twenty five. But then I thought cosmic beauty is right human race relations and the Aquarian yes. age. So I, I think it's it's very beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Because the the you the human being as the son of God is already an expression of this beauty. Mm -hmm. We should show it and speak about and invite others to follow this path and to unfold a total new civilization on planet. The first steps from something total new is not easy, but even if we are only a handful, after 100 years or 200 years there will be a few millions. Or we will see. As uh, even as Master Twal Kul says, even if the if the test or if the 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 first steps what we are doing are not so successful as we expect, the, in, the essential point is that we started, that we were convinced that we were ready to do this first step and to put it into words and to speak together and to speak about what we can do together. This already is done and the other steps will follow. So since we are so at the beginning of something absolutely wonderful and beautiful, so it will take some time until we also get all these energies in our microcosm settled and understand it better, in, first in our relations to these energies and then in group formation and so on. So I, I can you tell not more because I'm at the first steps as you are. The only difference is perhaps that I was studying the last 40 years a lot and in the intensive group development intensive group structure. As you know, we created also a poster and we created the handbook with the poster what all speaks around the 10 seed groups as the new group of earth service. So, <clears throat> so I'm just, since Rudolf mentioned the poster, I'm showing it on the, oops, on the screen. There, this was about 40 years ago, there we were speaking the first time on the 10 seat groups. You can, perhaps you can read it. <coughs> and then we, we try to understand how are these groups already related to the different departments in the United Nations. And then we have all the non-governmental organizations in the outer green circle. We didn't start to with the 10 and, and today perhaps hundred thousands of NGOs uh, how they are uh, on the planet uh, in, in different countries uh, available or not. So this was 40 years ago when we with this poster was created. Well, at the time we thought uh, each people, each group could find their own place in the circle in relation to the seed groups. And we, it is still one of the main uh, purposes of the Institute for Planetary Synthesis, which Rudolf founded with other co-workers to, to help people find in which seed group they can serve. 
Because when you understand in what seed group you have to work in this incarnation, then you are already out of the average thinking. Because then you know you were sent to the planet Earth with a special task and you are here for 70 or 100 years to manifest a special quality what is a part of the divine plan. So this is the help what we wanted to give through this post on the 10 groups for every human being on this planet. I think you mentioned you wanted to show something on the screen. Uh, I think that you would need to press share, share your screen. We don't see it yet. Ah, right. Uh, so. so we see it now, but we have the previous slide. Now, yes, now we do see. Yes, uh, all right, okay. Okay. There was a question from uh, uh, René uh, Figure asking, Rudolf, can you, could you say more about the role of the observers in your present world crisis, particularly about their role, about seeing the inner value of events on our planet? And there were more questions about the seed group, so if you could enlarge on that. And one more yes. question was, if you... I, I can only, us, I only uh, answer what, how I, I how ex experience this and what I understand. So you are asking about the observers. The trained observers. The trained observers. So these are people, I think mostly of them are disciples from the Masters of Wisdom. And they observe very careful humanity in this enfolding of a new consciousness, of a new planetary underst of a new understanding on life on a planet. Why? And they want to help that we not behaving a little bit more intelligent than high developed animals. We should be helpers for the Masters of Wisdom that we can go out and speak to the spiritual groups all over the planet about this plan, what is offered now already 80 years ago by Master Zwalkul to humanity when he gave the 10 C groups out in his book, Discipleship in the New Age. So we are at the very beginning, and we have not yet 100 years since it was written down in the books with Alice Bailey. But we, I, I feel very strong now because we get another process of unfolding on the planet. And it is good if we sit quietly every day for a few minutes and let penetrate this only, only the word cosmic beauty. What does this mean for me? What does this mean for my children? What does this mean for the whole of the planet? We have our individual enfoldment process. We have to, we have to, to put aside all the things which squeeze us into a certain shape of a planetary citizen. We have to be more than a planetary citizen. We have to be an intelligent human being on planet Earth who can help the spiritual enfoldment. This is how I understand this work, what is offered to us through these ten groups and in the direction, work in the direction together for the cosmic beauty. The beauty is already there. This is the expression, the divine expression of a human being is already a one essential aspect of cosmic beauty is the human being itself. Another question following on this chart. Uh, it's uh, given your study for many years, do you, Alice and Rudolf, find yourself aligned with with a particular seed group or more with the idea of an integrating or a Russian seed group cosmic beauty? According how I was guided on this planet, 
I had the impression that I have something to do with the political workers because I'm here in Geneva also in NGO groups working in the United Nations. And this is, is the body who has a tremendous influence today on the political situation on the whole planet. This was one of my impressions what I had. And I feel I feel enriched every time when I'm invited to go to the United Nations and, and meet a new friend or, or, or invited for a conference and so on. I think there I have to, I can give some contribution, but very, very, let me see, like, like I'm, I'm like a, a child with five or six years trying to do something good, but, but working still out how are the relations and how is the relation to the other cultures, to the other languages and so on. So I only speak three languages and uh, my Alice besides me, she is, she is very lucky, she speaks five or seven. So we are, she is much more comfortable in Geneva than me because I have only three languages and she can make yourself, herself understood in in, in five or seven, seven languages. This is one challenge. One challenge is this, because if if you have people coming from Africa or from Asia and from all over the world and people speak only a little English and their, and their mother tongue when they come to the United Nations, it is not not so easy to have a, have a good conversation. So mm -hmm. you see, we all have in this process, accept that the future, the future education on the planet, in my understanding, has to be every child what is born on this planet speaks a chosen language, which is for obligatory for every citizen what is on this planet, and then can speak the mother tongue and so on. So since the masters of wisdom choose English as their language with which they wrote all the books in the last hundred years. Let's see, everybody has to learn, besides the mother tongue, a second language, and this is English. Then we do the first good constructive step, and we can help other families and explain why and so on. And then we are coming to a similar harmonious cooperation like is already going on in the spiritual hierarchy between the 63 masters and the Christ and in Shambhala anyway where the 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 the, the, the will don't need the language the, the, will, the will to good where the will to good is more expressed in a telepathic way. But we need still language here. So therefore Master Twalkul offers us I, I just read it this afternoon he, he offers us that we should come in contact with him during the full moon meditations. And you can read this in, in Dina 1. This is on page uh, nine, 29 or 30, English page 29 or 30, read it. They invites us that we learn telepathic communication. That these are very practical steps. So why should we not start there? and be good cooperators and work together with, with this higher level of consciousness, what we call the Masters of Wisdom. Um, for myself, I always thought of the group of trained observers as being a particular, my particular direction of service. Uh, this Institute for Planetary Synthesis, I would rather place it among the educators because we are the, the whole task of the Institute is to make known this 10 seed group structure, which is an educational task to make known this structure. There is one other aspect of the 10 seed groups is that they represent actually the qualities that each person has to develop within him or herself, each person has to learn tele telepathy to communicate with the higher levels of, 
of the higher self or of the group soul, of the hierarchy, etc. Each person has to observe and dissipate the glamours and illusions that cloud our emotional bodies. Each person has to put order in his etheric body through magnetic healing. Each person has to serve as an educator as, or as a religious worker or as a scientist or as a political organizer or as, or as a psychologist. These are our fields of service in the world today which require much cleaning and much transformation to become real expressions of cosmic beauty. And finally, we are all creative workers. We are all creating something in the world together. This is already, in my understanding, the beginning of cosmic beauty. So this is the very wonderful beginning already that we can speak today about this and this enfoldment in the just beginning Aquarian age, where we will have a total different life on planet Earth for every human for every human being and also for the other kingdoms of nature. We will behave differently to the mineral kingdom, to the plants, to the animals. Today we, we slaughter millions of animals because we want to eat their bodies. But this is for me very primitive. So this is uh, animal instinctive life. This has nothing to do with human with a human life. The human being does not need this this kind of, of food. So uh, this may be a challenge for for several. But also, has the human being the right to kill? This is my question. Do I have the right to kill and to eat afterwards the other body? This is all given by the creator, every every animal. And then I go here and kill this and eat it. Now, is, is this high intelligence or is, this is very primitive? So this is, these are challenging uh, uh, situations for all of us. So I stopped meat eating already 50 years ago because I felt they can tell you what I felt that my I was in the in the designing offices in in the machine tool construction in Germany, and I felt when I eat meat or any product what is for an animal besides milk, then my mental capacity is very heavy, and I have not the or not the the dynamic what I need for my new uh, involvement of construction of, of new machine tools and so on. So this was, was shown to me when I was a very young man and uh, and since then I'm following this. So then I stopped this. Why should I eat this? Is this not good for me? And this also not good for the others, but will be killed that I have something to eat. So, so this is absolutely for me, the human being has from the from the creator, the human being has no right to kill. There is no right for the human being to kill. So this is this is a, a cosmic law in my understanding. And and you can this you cannot manipulate because there is no right for the human being to kill. And these are only a few words. And you can Imagine when we change this into a new kind of thinking, then we are approaching cosmic beauty. Um, 
Alexander, is it already time for the meditation? We definitely approach in that time and um, this period of ref reflection and sharing it prepares us for that and so we um, as soon as you feel that we are ready, we can go into meditation. Uh, just two more uh, uh, comments. One was the question to share, the request to share the chart that we see on the screen. And you can find now in the chat box the link to the uh, IPS website where you can find this chart uh, in a larger format so you can read everything there because yeah it's not quite readable from the screen but I encourage yeah. you to, to visit the website and study it in depth and also there was a raised hand before by Klisha so Klisha if you still would like to share please raise your hand again and we'll unmute you uh, and there was a question uh, coming from Rebecca asking you if you could please tell the group about uh, your get involved initiative on your IPS website. All right. Um, the Get Involved we developed as a way to um, help, well, just to get to know people who want to work with us. This is uh, why we have put these questions on the, on the website. And uh, for the groups, the the, alter, the the other alternate, the other option is to fill the questionnaire to be part of the directory of uh, organized according to seed groups. So there are actually two possibilities. One is more for individuals to to tell us how they want to work together with us and the other is for groups or organizations to have a description on the directory of their group work so that they according to the C group. So it's it's a kind of experiment to see if people with groups can identify with certain seed groups. No, or only to spread this project, what we call seed groups, only to help to spread, 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 until also uh, international organizations, governments, and so on, uh, the culture, every every government has a cultural department, so, uh, or, or ed education, so one day also there they have to, uh, open their eyes and their ears and listen to what is given already nearly 100 years ago by the Masters of Wisdom. So it is unfolding. This, this whole thing is unfolding. We are only helped as best as we could in the last 40 years, but it seems now it is more coming to to the surface and, and more people, not only spiritual groups, also other groups are interested because the world crisis on the other side is very heavy and new ideas are, are, are here, total new ideas for, for a new planetary living together and for a new planetary culture. So this is, this, this is the Aquarian age opens the everyday a little bit more its gates and this is the expression of cosmic beauty. And this is what we have to understand if we want really to be constructive, more constructive as we are until now. We have to show that we are absolutely harmless for everybody on the planet. There is only one thing, there is only constructive cooperation between all human beings. There are no enemies. When somebody creates out of this information the idea of an enemy, then it's a poor fellow. Rudolf, I have a question about uh, your experience. For 40 years you've been working to share 
the idea of 10 seed groups. And as we look at this chart, in the center of the chart, the masters of wisdom, planetary hierarchy. From your experience, how, what is people's reactions, especially when you talk about this at the United Nations headquarters in Geneva, how people re react to the idea of planetary hierarchy and what is the best way to communicate the, the idea behind this, that people would, would relate to the idea of the planetary government, spiritual government? I can to give you my experience. I met directors of international um, uh, uh, companies here in Geneva, in the UN, and so on. But all these people they are also seeking new ideas, new uh, new lifestyles, and they were coming in in the some circumstances together with the books of Master Valkul, and then we met, and then. I understood how difficult it is for them to get only only the idea into a business mental business mind that such thing exists. For instance, that that there is a government on the planet under the under the guidance of the Christ with sixty three masters of wisdom who take the whole responsibility for the, for the whole planetary development here. So the people, they are, they are totally closed when, as long as they think only intellectual. As long as they not start really thinking with love, with understanding, and a certain kind of enlightenment and openness to share and so on and to to help it is very difficult this is like you put a very heavy and think it was uh, a lid a very heavy uh, blanket blanket on on these friends it is very very difficult because they were thinking for 40 50 years like this and now comes such a crazy fellow and and tells them yes they uh, there, there are other dimensions of thinking also. No? So then this blows their minds. No? That's the biggest, one of the biggest challenges for us as disciples to communicate. People can be open to many ideas, but as soon as we start communicating this idea of the planetary yeah. spiritual yeah. government, so it's probably we should find to think about the more creative ways, beautiful ways to communicate this idea that would speak to people without putting that blanket onto their eyes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But it, uh, for instance, there are artists, painters, and so on. They try, uh, we also, when we created this poster here, what you see, this was also uh, an artist, but he was so an inspired and he was so happy that he could, there was only, uh, it was not a, a difficult uh, uh, painting what he has to produce, but but he came and, and wanted to help and wanted to give his contribution that, that he uh, brought it out like this. So uh, this is not an easy process for many people today on the planet because it is a tremendous change in their lifestyles. So when I I tell them that I get up every morning between four and five only that I can have my regular meditation at six with all the other groups on the planet and this a second time at six in the afternoon so that I every 12 hours recharge my batteries and my uh, my and my mind my mental capacities through the acceptance of every 12 hours a rhythmic connection with the with the hierarchy and with the masters of wisdom. That this is a totally different lifestyle. No? But I am in this world, but I live another life in this world. I do not attack anybody or nothing. But I live my life. I live what I have to do and what I want to do. It's not that uh, that I am confronted somebody if somebody likes to yes then I tell them only yes 
from 6 to 7 in the morning, 6 to 7 in the evening, Rudolf is not available. All the other time I'm here for you, but not in these two hours. I think it's a beautiful um, way of presenting that. That's there is this as two lives. There's a beautiful book in Russian, esoteric book, which talks about the inner reality. And so yes, we should ourselves start living these two lives and embody these realities and live in the rhythm of the hierarchy. And that's probably one of the best ways to communicate the reality of the hierarchy. Alexander, when you start questioning yourself, why I am here? Why I am here on this planet? For what was I sent, was I sent to this place? What, what is my real work, what I should do here? So this is what came to my mind when I was in the beginning of my twenties. This was at the end of World War II, when I lost everything. I lost my home, I lost my father in the war, and I was for 13 years in refugee camps. So then I thought, okay, life goes on for what I'm here. And then step by step I found, and today I can, I have an annual pass to go into the United Nations and any time I want and so on. You see how life is changing if you get the right track. And I'm very grateful that I had this guidance. But I am also ready to sacrifice any personal things for this task. Thank you very much for your answer. We do our meditation now? Yes, please. So this is a meditation, what is normally held in the Arkane School in New York and Geneva and other places. This is a special for the three spiritual festivals. And the meditation is called letting in the light. First, we start with our group fusion. We affirm the fact of group fusion and integration with the heart center of the new group of world service mediating between hierarchy and humanity. I am one with my group brothers and all that I have is theirs. May the love which is in my soul pour forth, forth to them. May the strength which is in me lift and aid them. May the thoughts which my soul creates, creates reach and encourage them. It's a wonderful mantra. Unity. Alignment. We project a line of lightened energy towards the spiritual hierarchy of the planet. 
the planetary heart, the great ashram of Sanat Kumara, and towards the Christ at the heart of hierarchy. We project a line of lighted energy to the heart of hierarchy. And extend the line of light toward Shambhala, the center where the will of God is known. Higher interlude. Hold the contemplative mind open to the extraplanetary energies streaming into Shambhala and radiate it through hierarchy. Using the creative imagination endeavor to see the three planetary centers, Shambhala, hierarchy, and humanity, gradually coming into alignment and interplay. This is for me cosmic beauty. Shambhala, hierarchy, and humanity coming into alignment and interplay. We are coming to our meditation on the seed thought for the Easter festival. I come forth and from the plane of mind I rule. I come forth and from the plane of mind, I rule.
precipitation. Using the creative imagination, visualize the energies of light, love, and the world good pouring throughout the planet and becoming anchored on Earth in prepared physical plane centers through which the plan can manifest. Let's use the sixfold progression of divine love as the sequence of energy precipitation. Shambhala, hierarchy, the crest, the new group of our service, men and women of goodwill everywhere in the world, physical centers of distribution. Shambhala, hierarchy, Christ, the new group of our service, men and women of goodwill everywhere. Lower interlude. Refocus the consciousness as a group within the periphery of the great ashram. Together we sound the affirmation. In the center of all love I stand. From that center I, the soul, will outward move. From that center I, the one who serves, will work. May the love of the Divine Self be shed abroad in my heart, through my group, and throughout the world. Visualize the downboring spiritual inflow released from Shambhala through the hierarchy and streaming into humanity through the prepared channel. Consider how these inpouring energies are establishing the pathway of light for the coming world teacher, the Christ.
visualizing the downpouring spiritual inflow flow released from Shambhala through the hierarchy and streaming into humanity through the prepared channel. Consider how these inpouring energies are establishing the pathway of light for the coming world teacher, the Christ. distribution. As the great invocation is sounded, visualize the outpouring of light and love and power from the spiritual hierarchy through the five planetary inlets, London, Darjeeling, New York, Geneva, Tokyo, irradiating the consciousness of the whole human race. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose, purpose guide the little wills of men. The purpose which the masters know and serve. from the center, which we call the race of man. Let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. We can sound together as a global group work the own three times together.
so may it be. Thank you very much, Rudolf. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Dos <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for participating in this global service today. And I invite you to join our coming uh, webinars. And uh, our next webinar will be on April 28th. It will be a new moon uh, webinar and it says here Aries new moon but it's it's going to be Taurus new moon sorry apologies and with this we will continue uh, our cyclic meditation project focusing on the UN uh, sustainable development goals and under the energies of Taurus we will work with the SDG 15 life on land so please join us for this work and we also invite you to join the Vesak festival great invocation ritual webinar where we will sound great invocation in different languages and so if you would like to participate I invite you to uh, email us saying uh, what language you could use to sound a great invocation and if any of your um, group brothers and sisters in other uh, parts of the planet uh, could bring up rare languages please encourage them to join this and get in touch with us prior the next full moon and for the Another webinar that we will have during the Vesak, it will be uh, on May 7th, we will have a planetary alignment with representatives of all the continents coming together, sounding the notes of their continent and sharing on the topic of alignment and leading us in this alignment ritual. Thank you. Let's be connecting during this sacred days of the Aries full moon and throughout the entire high interlude of the year going through three major full moon festivals. And Lent, let's end our work today sound in the Gayatri. O thou who gives the sustenance to the universe, from whom all things proceed, to whom all things return, unveil to us the face of the true spiritual Son hidden 
by a disk of golden light, that we may know the truth and do our whole duty as we journey to thy sacred feet. Ooh.